Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Joe. In the previous episodes, we have learned how to create the outstanding collection manager found in Hearthstone by using Unit Engine and C Sharp script. Inside UI Manager script, we use transform.getChild methods to return a transform child by index. There are several disadvantages. First, we cannot modify the order under this game object because once we do that, the index will mess up. Second, it's incredibly expensive to your game's performance. So what's alternative? In this episode, we will cover not only what scripto objects are, but show one very simple example using scripto objects. Here are the steps I needed to follow. First, I need to create one class which derives from scripto object instead of mono behavior. Then, I need to fill in the information in the inspector and integrate our card data with the UI. After completing one single card, I'm going to duplicate and create more cards. As always, the links for the assets and the project is on the description below, so feel free and check them out for yourself. By the way, I have already prepared the text version of this episode. Now, let's get into the video. Now we have opened up Unity and currently we use our previous Clash Manager project. First of all, create a new scene. In order to change the background color applied to the screen, we can select solid color and choose to the light green color. Right click anywhere in the hierarchy, go to UI and select canvas. Set UI scale mode to scale with screen size, which allows us to specify a resolution to use as references. The reference resolution we set 1920 plus 1080. We have prepared one card prefab in this project. Stay organized by creating a folder under your scripts folder called Scriptable. Inside the newly created Scriptable folder, create our first C-sharp script called Scriptable card. This class will be used as a container for all cards that display in this game. Scriptable objects are data container. They don't need to be attached to a game object in a scene. They can be saved as assets in the project. They are used as assets, which are only meant to store data, but can also be used to help serialize objects and can be instantiated in the scene. Inside this class, start by deriving from scriptal object inside mono behavior. This action tells Unity that you still want to use Unity features and methods, like a typical mono behavior, but you will no longer need to put this script onto a game object. Instead, it will be treated as any other common assets that can be created, similar to creating a prefab, things, or material. The first public is one string type variable that is called card name. The string variable will hold the name of card. Then, we create another string type called card description, which represents the description of the card. We will need to add our script object to the assets menu. We can use the attribute to make it easy to create custom assets using your class. Then, we have another public sprite variable called car sprite and card background sprite. Also, we have another card class type variable that is called card class. There is no error under this type because we have declared the card class enum type before. If you follow this episode and do not download my previous project, you can create this enum inside your script card script looks like this. Finally, we need the gameplay star, so we need one public integer variable, mana cost, a public int for attack value, and a public int for the health. Create a new C-sharp script called card UI. Create a new folder called cards. Inside this folder, if all went well, you should be able to right-click within the project window and see your new card data assets them as well. Click on the first card assets in the cards folder and take a look at the inspect window. Here, you will see an asset to store information about this particular card. Fill in the information for your first card. Try to give them unique description, mana cost, and attack damage, etc. Be sure to use the appropriate sprite located under the cards folder 
for the car's bright field, and its car background. Now it's time to integrate our car data with the UI. Go to Card UI script. We have to set up our card. We first need to a reference to the script object that we want to display. To do this, we can simply create a public scriptable card type variable called card. Then create one new text variable called name text to hold a reference to the UI text component of our name text game object. Create another new text variable called description text to hold a reference to the UI text component of our description text game object. Additional, we create one new image variable called log image to hold a reference to the UI image component of our log image game object. Then create one image type called number image and one text variable called context. Go to car script, create another boolean variable called is killed, which represents whether this card is locked or not. Then the integer type variable hold number will track down how many cards do we have for this card. Create a new function called display card and call these functions inside star methods. We can write name text dot text is equal to card dot card name. Go back to Unity, drag this card game object as a new prefab. Then delete the current prefab and drag the new prefab under the UI canvas. I just make sure our current card prefab will not influence other stuff in this project. Now let's drag all of references inside the empty slot. Then go back to Visual Studio and continue. Description text dot text is equal to card dot card description. Card image dot sprite is equal to card dot card sprite. Using two string methods can convert integer type into string type. Once the boolean variable is held is equal to be false, which means we don't have this card, this card is locked. We want to display the lock image to our player. Otherwise, we have to set active to be false. What's more, once the card is locked, we want the card image turn into black. Otherwise, our cards will turn into its normal color. We don't want to display the whole number image when the card is locked. Even the card is unlocked. If whole number is greater than 1, the number image can set active to be true. Otherwise, set active to be false as well. We can write count text.text .text is equal to card dot whole number to string. We can use rich text to change the font size inside the C-sharp script. Since we have declared card class enumeration, we use switch statement to achieve. The switch statement provides a more elegant way to test a variable for equalities against a list of values. Each value is called a case. Each case represents a value to be checked, followed by a column, and the statements to get executed if that case is matched. By the way, the break statements that ends each case will be covered shortly. If we enter the play mode, we can compare the card information with card assets on Inspector. If we change the data and try again. Cool. Each data has corresponding with the correct value on Inspector. We can change the value and test again. Nice. 
Now it's time to make more cards. We simply create one UI panel and add grid layout group which place its child layout elements in a grid. Remember the width and height of our card and change the cell size. Then drag our card game object under the UI panel. Press Command or Ctrl D to duplicate four times. Now there are five cards in this game. Likewise, we need to another four different card assets. Let's change each card detail information. Don't forget to drag each card asset inside their slot. We can run our thing and look at the game view. Each card has match with one card access information on Inspector. Cool. Now we don't have to use the for loop and get child methods to integrate our card data with the UI references. Also, we can easily change the game object prefabs later. One of the main use cases for scripto objects is to reduce your project's memory usage by avoiding copies of values, increase your workflow, reduce memory usage, and even decouple your code architecture. Alright, this is the end of this video. In the next episode, we'll have a look at my Unity workflow on Recreate the Hero Selection project. I will cover what I did in this project and share all of scripts with us. Actually, that's much similar with our Clash Manager project. As always, you can download the project from the description below. By the way, you can join our server on Discord. Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share with friends, and subscribe to my channel. There's much more to come. I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.